Hey guys, what's up? I'm Joe here. Today we're going to discuss The Haunting of Hill House, a Netflix original series, 10 episodes long. I don't know anyone who's actually in this, aside from the guy who played Luke, because he played Mike Vogel in, uh, what's your number? Starring Anna Faris and Chris Pratt and so many other people. Uh, Mike Vogel was in that. So, I didn't know anything about this, this series. I only saw it because it was all over my timelines. And I was like, ah, oh, maybe this is interesting horror show. So I started it, and after the first two episodes, I stopped because it was garbage. And I was like, why are they doing this, jumping back and forth and back and forth? And I even, I posted about it, and then people were like, oh, you gotta see it because it's paralleling from the past to the present. And I was like, no, no, no. Okay, there's a show. Uh, called Me, Myself, and I on CBS, which does great parallels from past, present, to future of how to story tell. Unfortunately, it was only a season long, but that's a great way to show it. The way Quentin Tarantino does, the story starts at the beginning, but it ends at the beginning, and it's like how he has chunks put into effect. It makes sense, those kind of timelines. But when you have three minutes of past to three minutes of present, to three minutes of past, to three minutes of two years ago, to three minutes of present. It's it's not how you tell a story. And then I watched Chilling's Adventures of Sabrina because I was dying to see that. That was a kick-ass show. And I was like, you know what? I'll keep up with the horror thing. Let me just, I'll, I'll try it. I'll try another episode. And then I watched the third episode of Haunting of Hill House. Garbage because of this jumping back and forth. And I was like, this has great potential because it's a great story, but it's not told properly. And then the fourth episode, I was like, all right, so they're not doing as dramatic past to present time lapses. And then basically four, five, six, seven, eight were great. Nine and 10, meh. But four, five, six, seven, eight, no, I'll give nine to episode wise were great. I think it was like, what, episode six was Bent Neck Lady? That episode was terrifying in a good way of the storytelling. It turns out the ghost was the time traveling of her being dead the entire time. Smart. Didn't see that coming. Then there was uh, the whole the whole ten minute fight uh, in, in the funeral parlor between the siblings and the camera just keeps panning in a circle and then zooming back and then zooming around and going in different directions but it was continuous it was a continuous fight that was smart cinematography so the show had a lot more negatives than positives as far as I'm concerned within a matter of storytelling it was a good story for the 10 episodes that it was but I feel if you wanted to elicit more of an emotional aspect instead of getting your anxiety and adrenaline pumped and then go back down and then it pumped in and then go back down. That that doesn't, I don't see the point of that. There was a few jump scares that were very smart. There was a lot of ghosts and a lot of scenes that were very smart. But I would have done like the first episode of the past. The second episode, the present. The third episode, the past. The fourth episode, the present. I think that would have been more of an appropriate way to tell this story because it's a very intricate story than have it three minutes here, three minutes there, three minutes here, three minutes there. It's too scattered. It's it's too scattered. That's why the first three episodes, three and a half episodes, were just garbage because it's, it's, it's not an appropriate way to elicit a story. But then, like I said, it, it, it helps itself. So, of course, there are questions. Why are the ghosts trapped to the house why is that woman from the 20s whose name i can't remember the head ghost in charge why is everyone trapped when they die why can't they leave why do they for why, why do they go back to the form that they're most comfortable with but again that's just basic you know ghost knowledge in general for those of you who are familiar with the supernatural um i, I don't i don't like that though like at least murder house in horror story they explain why the ghosts can't leave the house. The hotel. They kind of explain why the ghosts can't leave the hotel in a horror story, right? But that's American Horror Story. So why is it that American Horror Story can elicit more information with their episodes than this? You're giving us ghosts that are killing people. Why are they killing people? Why are they trapped there? I, I, I think it's inappropriate to leave the, I was going to say reader, 
leave the audience member questioning these things, that they should be definite information. You know, what if this series didn't do well? It's doing great, which I kind of see why, but not fully, but it's already being talked about for season two. But what if it didn't do well? And this was it. This was all we got was 10 episodes of this one show. And that was it. All of these unanswered questions are left at the, at the, I was going to say reader again, at the viewer's discretion. And I don't like that. If you're invest, if I'm being invested into your show, I should be told a full story. I shouldn't be giving half a story. I don't, I don't know. So come season two, will we get those answers? Will we get more answers of why the ghosts are stuck to this house? Or why they're all moldy and zombie looking ghosts anyway? That's the other thing which I'm, I'm kind of confused about. Because sometimes they're moldy and zombie-ish, but then other times that they're perfectly fine. Why? Why? Answers! There's too many questions left unanswered, and I don't like that. When you're telling an elaborate ghost story, you need to give the details of the ghosts of the ghost story. This is why horror story is the pivotal of how storytelling in a horror genre is given. Because that's how you tell a story. Every single American horror story season is perfect for its own way. And some people don't like other seasons over the other. That's fine. I get it. But each season is different than the other. And that's what makes it smart. That's what makes it catchy. Even though everything is combined and together into the horror universe that it is, but like I said, Horror Story Murder House was explained. Horror Story Hotel was explained. Why the ghosts stay in those vicinities. Mm -mm, haunting of Hill House didn't do that. And I don't like that. I don't like that. So many of you like the show. I get it. But you will only see it at a face value. And it kind of annoys me that I see it on a cinematic front. And you're only seeing it at a mainstream media front. I've seen it on the storyteller front. It's not how you tell a story. It's a good story if it was told properly, but it's not told properly. And that's what, that's the issues I have. Shouldn't have been told that way. Three minutes jumping from place to place is not, no. Uh-uh. Even the Conjuring movies explain why the ghosts can't leave that one particular house because of the witchcraft stuff. <sighs> ah, aggravation. Did you see The Haunting of Hill House? Did you like The Haunting of Hill House? What do you say to The Haunting of Hill House Season 1 on Netflix? For this Halloween season. Wah-ha-ha. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Mucho mahalo, guys.